the cinnabar. So you need a barrel for your vintage Winchester or Marlin lever action rifle. And that's pretty common. It's something we come up against all the time as we're working on some of these old rifles. Most often it's just because they have a poor bore and the owner wants to get them shooting again. Sometimes it's a, a, a barrel that's had several inches cut off the end like this one or one that's been damaged in some way. Like this is a pretty decent barrel but it looks like a rat has chewed in a, an extra rear sight dovetail for it. So let's talk a little bit about our options. And of course our, our options for a replacement barrel um, depend a lot on what our goal is. Um, whether we're just trying to get, get it shooting or if we want a barrel that's correct in every way as far as caliber, mark, barrel markings, um, finish that would match the rest of the rifle or all that kind of thing. And of course your first and best option is to always buy guns that don't need a new barrel or some kind of barrel work. But say we're past that and that's no longer an option. You've got a barrel that or you've got a rifle that that needs barrel work or or a new barrel. What do we do? Okay so to me the the next best option is to find a suitable uh, original replacement barrel. But that can be pretty difficult, if, especially if you want everything correct and date correct, um, the, the finish correct, the, the caliber markings, everything just right, and then the finish that will match your gun. Of course, it isn't as important if you're going to refinish the gun. Um, you know, if you're looking for a 3030 barrel for an 1894 Winchester, say, you might have better luck than if you're looking for some oddball caliber in a 1895, say, like a half octagon 4072 1895 barrel that they made very, very few of. You're probably never going to find that in any condition. Okay, so our, our, our next option may be if it's just got a poor bore, then we can talk about relining. Now, Relining, if you're just making a shooter, is is a decent option, but not for all calibers. And in, in my opinion, now I I don't like to reline barrels in anything more than like what's commonly referred to as the pistol cartridges or the pistol caliber cartridges, uh, 3220, 3840, 4440. You know, some of the harder hitting uh, calibers, I don't I don't particularly like to to reline. And of course, it, it does uh, have a uh, impact on the value of a collectible firearm. So, you know, it's it's a decent option if if you're wanting a shooter in a in a lower power cartridge uh, or a 22 especially. It's 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 a decent option. And I don't do a lot of work with centerfire relining. I, I typically um, suggest contacting John Taylor Machine out in Idaho. They do a wonderful job, and they really specialize in that kind of barrel work. But the next option, of course, is have a new barrel made and there, there are a couple options out there and invariably when I talk to a customer that wants to have a new barrel made they ask me about a, an outfit called winchesterbarrels.com down in Florida. So today I've got a, a barrel that just came in from, from winchesterbarrels.com. Uh, this one's a, an 1895 barrel for a, a early first model flat side. So we're going to do kind of a product review and talk a little bit about their sales and service uh, so that I, I I can get across to folks who are maybe interested in, in getting a, a barrel from these folks just what they can expect. So stick around, we'll go through, we'll talk about their, their customer service and we'll kind of go through with a fine tooth comb and, and look over this barrel uh, as an example of what you might expect if you buy from them. Now what kind of company are they to deal with? Well first off the prices are fantastic. You know $500 for a brand new barrel is, is a very good price and, and I've looked into barrel making a lot and, and I'm impressed with that. Now, if you want them to, to rust blue it it's another $150. Uh, so I don't have them rust blue or haven't had them do my barrels because the polish is so critically important when bluing and just based on what I've seen uh, of the barrels that they send I just really wouldn't trust them to, to have a good polish under the rust blue. Uh, one thing you will learn if you order a barrel from them is patience. You see I don't know if they're scared they're going to scare people off um, if they tell them how long it's going to take to get their barrel but uh, 
they basically, uh, on the barrels that I've ordered from them, I told me it's going to be like eight to ten weeks. And that's what I've heard from other people who have ordered barrels from them. It takes a lot longer. Unfortunately, the first one I ordered was for a customer, and he was the wrong customer to tell him it was just going to be eight to ten weeks. Because this guy called once a week or twice a week for seven months. It just drove me crazy until I finally got the barrel. And, and only because I was the squeaky wheel that was getting a hold of them, asking where that barrel was to try to get this other guy off my back. Now, I'd much rather hear from somebody that your barrel's going to take a long time. Look, we're swamped. We got all sorts of work. Most gunsmiths do have a lot of work. A lot of gunsmiths are a year out or more just to, to uh, work on guns. And so I'd rather hear that than it's going to be, oh, just eight to ten weeks. This last one took over a year, and I warned the customer it was going to be, you know, seven, eight, nine months. It ended up being a year, and, and when I finally started kind of complaining, then I ended up getting the barrel. So just be aware of that going in. If you order a barrel, it probably isn't going to get there anytime soon. Okay, so let's take a little closer look at the quality of the workmanship that went into this barrel. Now this is only the second barrel that I've gotten from WinchesterBarrels.com, so it's not a large sampling. But the quality on both of those barrels were very, very similar, so I think we can see a trend um, in, in the quality of the workmanship from, from what we find with this barrel. Now the first thing we did was, was uh, take a look at the rifling, and, and you know this is a button rifled barrel, so uh, it appears that it was done very, very well. Uh, the, the, Groove diameter is 307 and a half, which is just a, a half a thousandths tight, which we'd rather see it a little bit tight than a little bit loose. Uh, the land diameter is about 300 and a half. Uh, so, you know, that the, the was rifled properly. We've got a, just a factory Remington 3040 Craig cartridge here, and it chambers fine. And of course, chambering these because the head space is on the rim is pretty easy. Uh, basically, you just run it into where that, that rim will come up against the, the back of the barrel. Um, so I think, you know, as far as the, the uh, bore, the rifling, chambering, it was done pretty well. So let's take a little closer look at some of the finer details. Okay, so let's look at a critical measurement when we're, we're looking at a newly made barrel. And that's the difference between the shoulder here and the breech end of the barrel here. Because that's what's going to dictate the space between the end of this barrel and the face of the bolt, which is our head space, of course. So this is the barrel that came off of the gun that we sent back to them to use for getting the, the correct head space. And we're at 751. We'll measure it three places here, make sure we're consistent. Yeah, 751 and a half. 751. So basically 751 thousandths. And now this this new barrel. Seven fifty one and a half. Seven fifty one and a half. So looks like we're within a a half thousand seven fifty one. So that's a great measurement and and so we should be right in there as far as headspace. Now looking at, at it a little closer, it just was kind of left rough. There's some, some burrs here around where the extractor cut was made. Uh, the very start of the threads here is kind of rolled over, so it just needs a little, little bit of finish work that, that uh, maybe should have been done when it was cut. But overall, it looks like dimensionally uh, that it, it, it's pretty well done. And, and if I look at the threads, it looks like they've timed the threads really well too so that we, when this thing uh, uh, is screwed in, it should index up properly. Of course, we won't know for sure until we actually screw it into a receiver. Okay, so let's look at the sight provisions now. And we'll first look at this rear sight dovetail. And when I first got it, I just looked at that and it just looked narrow to me. So we've got some sights here, a couple of original Winchester sights, and as you can see, this one isn't going to go, here's another, it's not going to go, and here's a marbles rear sight from the same era, and it's not going to go either. So that dovetail is too narrow. Here's the, here's the original barrel we sent them, and we can see this marbles sight, 
slides right in there. So we're going to have to open up this dovetail, which isn't the end of the world, but it is uh, a little time consuming. And I think measuring the difference between these two dovetails were at least a good 15 thousandths narrower on this one. Uh, so it's going to take a fair amount of work. Now on these 1895s, the 3040 Craigs, the 303 British, all the carbines and muskets had this pin blade front sight. And so we can see this one's, this one's been installed. Some of them were actually integral to the barrel and then some of them were soldered on. This one's been soldered on. Um, it's, it's fairly crudely made. We're going to have to put uh, some work into that to really smooth it up. If we compare it to an original, the other thing that we can see right away is that it's quite a little bit taller. So when we find a sight blade, we're going to have to find a little shorter sight blade. If that hadn't already been drilled, we'd, we'd, we could just re-drill it a little lower and, and cut the groove down a little more. But um, it's going to take a fair amount of work to make this look similar to an original like this one is. Okay, now here's the barrel addresses. Here's the, the stamping on the original and then the roll stamp on the one we got back from Winchester Barrels. We can see they're, they're very similar in style, but it's just compressed. Um, you know, it's, it's a good quarter of an inch shorter, so it's a little smaller font. And you'll probably notice that the, the lower line is much deeper stamped than the upper line. Now, it is difficult to, to roll stamp um, round barrels. It's, it, it just, it's tough. So, uh, not going to complain too much about that. We just have to remember when we're polishing to really take it easy on that upper line because it's already quite a bit shallower than the bottom line. Now, let's look at the caliber mark here. And, and again, we've got quite a bit of difference. In this case, the caliber stamp is, is similar, but it's about 50% larger than the original. And so they look pretty good, but you know, if you, if you compare them against each other, it becomes very obvious. And you, and you probably wouldn't notice it that much if you didn't have the barrels right next to each other. Now, what we can still see here is probably the biggest difference and, and the most problematic issue is in the profile of the barrels. You can see that the profiles are quite a little bit different. And let me get a marker here so I can kind of show you that on the original barrel here, we have a, it's, it's pretty much a, a straight shot out to here and then starts to taper right about here. And on this barrel, the taper starts right up here. So there's a big difference in in this this taper here, and the and that becomes a big issue when we when we put the the end on here. It's going to leave a, a big gap in here along this area. So we're going to have to probably come in and and fill that and bed that so that we can take up the, a big gap between this end and the barrel in this area. Now, based on my experiences and others that I've talked to, if you order a barrel from winchesterbarrels.com, you can expect a reasonably priced barrel. You may have to be awfully patient about how long it takes to get to you. And if you're looking for a perfect replacement barrel that's going to look just like the barrel that came off your Winchester or Marlin, this might not be the barrel for you. It's going to be close. And if you're not looking for perfection and, and everything looking just right, um, you know, if it's a shooter grade, this, this might be your barrel. Now we've kind of enjoyed nitpicking the heck out of this thing and looking at all the fine details. Um, and I hope it, it's been a help to you folks who have considered using this particular company. Thanks for joining us. Hope you got something out of this episode. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.